There you go. New roots. That's what we're talking about today. New roots. Now, Ralph asked me what happened to the old roots. Well, that's the whole point. What does happen to the old roots? When we're talking about new roots. Let's go to Joel chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Now, therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart. All your heart. With fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Now the question is, what else does he want from that heart? So rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God. Key word there. Rend your heart. They used to tear their garments when something died. Not only do we need the new heart, but the old heart has to be torn. And in the tearing of the old heart, we notice that there's a death. So to answer your question, Ralph, the old roots must die. And we must now accept the new roots as we are grafted into the vine. Jesus said we're grafted into the vine. A new people grafted in. If we're grafted into the vine, we no longer have our old roots. We now have taken on the roots of the new vine. The old heart is gone. It's torn. It's rent. Keep on. Very keep on. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 10. You shall eat the old hearts and clear out the old because of the new. Everything old has to be taken away. In order to accept the spirit of Christ, in order to be grafted into the vine, we must release ourselves from the old. And this is what plagues people the most. We talk about change. We talk about people changing. And we talk about behaviors changing. And we talk about that change coming from the heart. But the key point that I feel from this, and I know from this is, we can change our behaviors. It's hard, but we can do it. And I've seen a lot of people change their behavior for the better. For the better. In the name of Jesus. Through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Because the Spirit has convicted them. The Spirit has motivated them to change their behavior. And to become new. However, they still have the same the heart has not changed. The feelings have not changed. And because the feelings have not changed, truly, they have not changed. The behavior has changed, but they remain the same in the root. If you graft a vine into a new branch, of a new root, and you don't feed from that root and gain the nourishment from that root, that vine will wither away and die. The Spirit of Christ will be quenched. Make no mistake about it. That is why we have to tear the heart. We have to take the old harvest that which we brought with us to the table, we got to clear it out completely and make new room for the new. Ezekiel 18.31 Cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed. 
and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. If you're just changing behaviors and you still feel the same way you do about things, nothing's going to change. You know, we have memories. Memories are formed by experiences, things that happen to us. And we remember them because of the emotion that is tied to them. So some memories have a good emotion, emotion associated with them. Some memories have a bad emotion associated with them. It's a bad feeling. It's a good feeling. It's a bad feeling based on certain experiences. And that is our memory. And that becomes our truth. But God says, if we're going to accept this Holy Spirit, if we're truly going to be that new creation, we have to let go of those old feelings based on old experiences, good and bad. And we've got to have a completely new heart of a new spirit. The spirit being your will. When the heart is new, when the old feelings are no longer allowed, they dictate how we feel. We'll have a new spirit, a new will, based on that new heart. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Key word right here. All things have passed away. Doesn't just mean you're changing your behavior. There's more to it than that. All beliefs, all associations, with certain situations and certain people, the feelings associated with people, places, and things that determine what we believe that now have become our truth. All of that has passed away. When you're a new creation, behold, all things. Didn't just say a little bit of this and a little bit of that. He said all things have become new. That's a new creation. That's what I'm talking about when I say a new root. Goes right down to the root. Matthew 6, 17, 18. And this is one of the things that happens when you get that new root. Okay? It's an example, not the only thing that happens, but this is an example. But when you fast, Jesus said this, anoint your head and wash your face so that you do not appear to be men in fasting, but to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. The Pharisees, the leaders, the Sadducees, and the Pharisees at that time were all about appearances. So they would change their behavior and their appearance to appear to be righteous and godly. But their root was still fixated on what they wanted, they needed, their beliefs, their feelings, their associations, all dictated by their experiences in the world. And they wanted to appear, they wanted people's adoration. They wanted people's respect. They wanted to be the leaders. That's the worldly way. And Jesus said, no, when you have my room, you're not going to need people's validation for anything you do. All you need is my validation. So when you do something, just do it. Don't tell nobody. Don't put on a, a you know, let people, you know, see you and, and believe, seeing is believing. No. 
Just do it. In fact, disguise what you do. Don't even let them know. But I know. And you will be rewarded openly through me. Whole new way of looking at things. Whole new way about feeling about things. Not just changing behavior. Going to the root. Ephesians 4, 29, 30. And this is the one. No, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Now, yeah, I get that. Okay, no corrupt word. I can do that. I can do that. But what is good but necessary edification? Edification meaning instruction. Oh yeah, I can do that. I can instruct. I'm good at that. I'm a leader. I'm good at teaching. I'm good at instructing. I know the difference between right and wrong. You know, I got a lot of things I can, you know, pass on to people. I like that instruction thing too, because that's what I can do. I'm good with instructing, because then I can control. Yeah, okay. What's next? That it may impart grace to the hearers. Wow. Let's think about that. So what they're saying is, is that, you know, there's three things he's telling me here in this, in this verse, three key things, with this new heart. I can't be, speak anything corrupt out of my mouth, okay. I gotta make sure it, it's good, good instruction, okay. But wait a second, there's more. Everything that come out of my mouth has got to impart grace to the Hebrews. So what that means is, and what I got from this is, is that when I received the grace from the Lord, it was forgiveness. It was forgiveness in the knowledge that I had done many things wrong, but in spite of all the wrong that I had done, Jesus gave me that grace. And not only did he give me that grace, that forgiveness, he took all that I had done wrong, cast it upon himself, and paid my penalty. So it looks like when it's all said and done, when I'm done talking to who I'm talking to, they got to feel that grace. I can instruct. I can let good words and beautiful words of love come out of my mouth. But they got to feel that grace when I'm done. If they don't feel that grace, then I'm missing part of what Jesus is telling me to do. And it's a sign that my heart is still trapped in the world. It's a sign that I still have that old root inside of me that's connected to the world. And it means that I got to go look at that root. I got to pull it up. You know, when you're getting rid of things, if you know they're like a weed. We talk about weed in the garden. If you're just gonna pull the weed off at the top, and now the garden looks nice again, what's gonna happen a week later? That old weed's gonna come right back on up. If you don't pull them weeds out by the root, get down to the feelings. <laughs> Change them feelings about people, about places, about things. You gotta change that. Then you'll be able to impart that grace to people while you're instructing and talking through your mouth. Psalms 40, verse 3. And this is what happens when we can get to that point. And this is, it takes a while to get to this point. Now, you may be at this point if you grew up in a loving, nurturing environment, being taught at a young age that relationship with Christ through the anointing of Christ. But for most of us, we weren't taught that. And we didn't receive all that. We didn't receive that love. 
But this is what happens when you get there. He has put a new song in my mouth. It's a whole new song. A whole new song you're going to sing. It's not the old song, you know, with different words. It's not the old tune. It's a whole new tune, a whole new song in my mouth. Praise the Lord. You know, because when you got that new song, above all else, you got healed. The old wounds have been healed. The pain, the suffering, the hurt, you know, hurt turns into anger very quickly. And when you express anger, that's a way of by-stepping or short-circuiting the feeling and the hurt. So a lot of people go straight to anger. And they don't want to feel the hurt. They don't want to remember the hurt. So they go right to anger. But when you got that new song in your mouth, you've been healed. And that's why we're praising God. Praise to my God for healing me from the hurt. Many will see it and fear it. They're going to hear the new song. They're going to see it in you. And they're going to fear it. And you know why they fear it? You know what they're fearing? They're fearing changing. That's what they're fearing. They're fearing changing. We human beings do not want to change. And we fear it. We don't want to do it. <laughs> we'll do whatever we can not to change. We don't want to. The ego, me, wants to hold on to me. And me is associated with what I believe. And what I believe is based on all my hurt and all my pain. That's how I protect myself. I'm going to fear that change because I don't understand it. I don't know it. I'm comfortable with what I've been doing with that old root. I know what to expect. You know, other people may not like it, but I'm good with it because I know what to expect. I can, I'm, I'm all right with it. Forget y'all. I'm, I'm good with it. No, we're going to fear that change. Many will see it and fear the change. But guess what? They will trust in the Lord. Keep going. When you get that song, that song that comes from a new heart, a new feeling, a new belief, when you get that new song in your mouth and you're just praising the Lord because you've been healed, People are going to see it. They're going to resist the change. But guess what? They will trust in the Lord. Because that new song of love that's coming out of your heart that shows people grace in everything you say, that's what's going to get. And they will trust in the Lord. That's the new root. Praise God for putting that in my spirit that I would see that somewhere between yesterday and today that I'd be able to express it. That I'd be able to understand it. That I'd be able to just take it to that next level. Anybody been to college? That's not like, I'd love to talk about this and I'm going to stop you know, when you go to college, it's got the 101 course, introductory. They got the 202. All right, you've been to college for a couple of years now. You ready for the 202? Then they got the 303. This is the 303. It might even be the 304. Not everybody can take that 303, 304 course and pass it. Some people don't even want to take them. They just stay at the 101, 202 level. That's the level. Praise God. Praise God. Amen.